Hi everyone, in the world of cloud computing, here are a few tech news highlights from this week. I'm Brad Nelson of Nelson Hilliard, cloud computing recruitment specialist placing great people in cloud, IoT, fintech and AI. Thank you all for your support on social media and subscribing to our blogs and YouTube channel. We are now on iTunes with our podcasts of all the shows and news. Below there is a link. Watch out for the new weekly cloud computing shows with David Linthicum, who's the world's number one cloud industry expert and internationally recognized thought leader. And don't forget to like, subscribe, comment and share these videos with your friends and with your colleagues. This week, the Commonwealth Bank has scaled up a system to automatically suggest 20 million conversation starters using a suggestion engine with AI Stack. The bank is halfway through a program of work it began back in 2015 called Customer Relationship Banking, of which technology investment was a big component, General Manager Andrew McCullum told Pegaworld in Las Vegas earlier this month. Part of the program is the deployment of Customer Engagement Engine, or CEE, which is built on a Pega system stack. Andrew McCullen said the idea behind the CEE is to have more proactive needs-based conversations with customers, regardless of which channels the customers came in through. This week saw Ripple stating that the banks are not ready for blockchain. Several banks have tested or deployed a system Ripple developed for international payments called Xcurrent that uses a bi-directional messaging that can eventually plug them into distributed ledgers. But Xcurrent's technology itself is not a distributed ledger, Ripple's chief cryptographer David Schwartz said. While Xcurrent uses cryptography, each party using the system does not have access to a shared ledger, as is the case with distributed ledgers like Eurythium or Hyperledger Fabric. Xcurrent uses an immutable interledger protocol, which Ripple says improves an existing payment networks because it offers instant settlement. This week sees $43 million stolen from cryptocurrency exchange by hackers. South Korean cryptocurrency exchange Bitthumb said that 35 billion won or $43 million worth of virtual coins were stolen by hackers, the second local exchange targeted in just over a week. Bitthumb said in a notice on its website on Wednesday that it had stopped all trading after ascertaining that some cryptocurrencies worth about 35 billion won had been seized. The Bitthumb theft highlights security risks and weak regulations of global cryptocurrency markets. And global policymakers have warned investors to be cautious in trading the digital currency given the lack of broad regulatory oversight. The cyber attacks come after a high profile theft of over half a billion dollars worth of digital currency at Japan's exchange CoinCheck earlier this year. This week sees Telstra cut at least 8,000 jobs. Telstra is set to cut at least 8,000 staff and cut out many of its infrastructure assets into a new standalone business unit under sweeping changes. Chief Executive Andrew Penn has been under increasing pressure to produce a strategy to work the company out of a financial rut. Telstra has said that the initial focus will be on the reduction of executive and management roles and minimizing any impact on the customer facing teams. Telstra is going to also invest in approximately 1,500 new roles to build new capabilities required for the future, in particularly the new shift to engineering capabilities including software engineering and information and cybersecurity. I'm Brad Nelson of Nelson Hilliard. I hope you enjoyed watching this week's news. Remember to like, subscribe, comment and share these videos with your friends and with your colleagues. You can also connect with me on LinkedIn and find us on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. And also check out the latest shows with David Linthicum on the podcast. Below there is a link. Until next week, be good, be safe and keep our clouds secure.